Welcome everybody. Um, this is our fourth in the, our th in our series of uh, sharing in song, and um, we have something a little bit different, a little uh, different presentation uh, tonight. Um, Steve Hedges from Akron will be um, doing the presentation, and he'll be assisted by Kara Ross, um, uh, a new a new face for Mefgox, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, if uh, those of you who have been around MEFDAX for a long time, uh, Steve is the son of our beloved Mike and Nadine Hedges, um, but he's a musician in his own right uh, now, and uh, I'll let him take it away and give a little bit of his background and introduce Kara. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. It's uh, really nice to be here. Uh, this is a very new thing for me. I've only been a choir director for about three, well, three and a half years. Um, uh, first, I want to thank Vicki and Barb and uh, Kitty Akos for putting this all together. It's taken a lot of time, and this is really a great idea. Um, also want to thank Nicholas Bodel, our MuffGox president, because he is the one who uh, has given me quite a few songs that we could try out with our choir. And that song uh, that we're going to do tonight, uh, Nicholas is the one that gave that to us. So really appreciate that, Nicholas. Um, a little bit about my background. Um, I was a high school band director for 32 years, uh, large division one school. Uh, we basically performed 12 months out of the year. So then after 32 years, I decided it might be time to pull back a little bit. So I retired from that, but now I'm teaching uh, about three fifths of a position uh, in the lower grades, instrumental music. Uh, and assist the high school a little bit and then also do music history. So that's uh, my background of music. Uh, like I said, um, uh, I've been uh, about three, just over three years uh, as director at Annunciation. And uh, Father Jerry just came to me after I retired and said, we need a choir director, would you do it? And I thought, well, I guess. And, and now the great thing is I was able to uh, see my dad conduct for many years. I also uh, had a great friend who had fabulous choirs that sang at the uh, school conferences and everything. So I'd watch his magical singers. And I've always had a love of music, but uh, of choral music, but um, most of the time was spent doing uh, instrumental music as well. So with that, um, I'll introduce Kara Ross, who has been with our church for about three years. And she's a professional singer. She sung uh, on Playhouse Square and some operas and also as a music teacher. So Kara, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Kara Ross. Um, I'm actually an Orthodox convert. I converted to Orthodoxy in March of 2018. Uh, so my background doesn't sound very Orthodox. <laughs> um, I attended Liberty University uh, for vocal performance, which is a huge evangelical Christian school um, in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. So I studied vocal performance there. Um, I did a little bit of um, opera in that Roanoke area before I moved to Ohio um, to marry my husband. So this is where his family's from. Um, and after we got married, we kind of just had one of those, you know, moments of, you know, we wanted to choose the church we wanted to go to. And um, our friend uh, be, had become Orthodox while he was in college and he invited us to just come and see. Um, so we went to our first Orthodox service then and about four years later now, um, we'll be Orthodox for three years this coming March. So um, I've learned a lot about Orthodox music, um, but I'm super interested to learn more and I've enjoyed, you know, being in our choir and I just had a baby in February and he's almost nine months old now. So yeah, but in terms of uh, my, my music, I do teach uh, vocal lessons privately and in a not pandemic world, I have done um, performances in Playhouse Square with the Cleveland Opera Theater. I've just been in the chorus these first couple of times, but I've done four operas since being here and just looking for opportunities to sing wherever I can find them. <laughs> okay, well then <laughs> we're really glad to have Kara with us and she's been an asset for us. Uh, uh, she's she's done a couple clinics with our choir too and we really appreciate it. Um, a little bit about our choir. Um, we um, are lucky to uh, have Georgia Stathopoulos, who 
is our president who tries to spearhead some mini clinics at our own church each year. And one of the years we had um, uh, Constantino Tsulano, and she she uh, is in the Dallas area, a great uh, uh, choir director of some colleges there. She's toured Europe with some people, and she's also prepared people for the Dallas Symphony to sing with them. Uh, she came to our church and gave this great mini conference and started us thinking about how to enunciate properly, how to blend and balance more, saying our vowels correctly and so on. And Carol will, will expound on that a little bit more. Uh, but uh, we used to use organ all the years that my dad was there. And when I first started directing just a few years ago, we used the organ. Well, we needed a choir, we needed an organ play, uh, accompanist because our last organist uh, couldn't do it anymore. So lo and behold, Kiriakos shows up to our church because he was finishing up his schooling in that area. So he came to our church for a little while and I thought, oh, that's great. Can you play organ for us? He said, sure. So he did that for a little bit. And then one time he could not make it. Uh, so therefore, I tried to call substitutes, couldn't find anything. So we just sang without an organ a cappella. Well, Father Jerry heard us and he goes, you did great. From now on, there will be no organ. I'm like, ah. Uh, so my mouth dropped open. I'm like, I don't know if we could do that. He says, sure you can. So from that moment on, we were a cappella. So that changed some things. It made us have to work harder. Uh, pitch is the big thing, right? Because people start singing, you start to go flat. There is no reference point. And so that was a big deal, trying to get people up to that. To, and then of course, enunciation. The uh, organ can cover up some of those um, inconsistencies that you have, but now we didn't have anything to cover us up. It was all us, you make a mistake, you know it. So therefore it took us a while, but it, it really worked out. And the choir was really uh, in a tizzy, you could say. They just didn't like it at first, but as we went on, it's just like we've been doing it for a long time and everybody's fine with it now. So, so um, you can do it too. So if that happens to you, I would suggest it because it really is a, a great thing to hear acapella music sung in tune. And, and it's, it's a constant work uh, for us to do that, but it, it really works out for us. So the thing that we're going to be doing tonight is uh, showing you an anthem that we're going to be uh, uh, that we sing at our church. We sing many anthems uh, at the end of the service when Endiron is taking place at the recessional. Uh, and we have some really nice ones. And, and Nicholas has given me quite a few uh, new ones that we can sing at the end of the service. So that's why we, we chose this one because it's a little bit different. Um, it's a French Orthodox hymn based off of uh, John 14, verse 27, and then John 13, 34. Um, in that it's uh, basically Holy Thursday, right before Christ is betrayed. And uh, he's saying to the disciples, um, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give this to you. So it's Christ's peace, his wholeness, it's completeness, that only the kind of peace that he can give the disciples. Uh, and then it doesn't, the rest of the verse isn't in the song, but it says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So it's that kind of feeling that you want to give in this piece. And then of course, the second verse, everybody knows. Um, I don't know if the music, do you want to put the music up there, Kiriakos? Uh, the second verse is a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. So that's obviously Christ's ministry summed up in that verse. And it's a very peaceful thing. So the music is not dramatic. It's, uh, it's just very calming. And, and so we want to sing it that way, but Kara is going to help us go through the phrases and show that we can do musical things with it, even if it's not dramatic. We want to make it musical so that it's more interesting and it has a beautiful sound to it. Uh, if you look at the first phrase here from measures one through four, basically, um, I, leave you my, I leave you my peace. We're going to swell up, start a little quiet, then swell up, and then at the last note, come back a little. Same thing with the next phrase. So it does that, basically that's your typical chorale type of piece that does that. There might be some other areas that, that's slightly different. But for now, if you can kind of notice those areas where it crescendos and comes down a little bit each time as you, as you hear it sung, we're gonna play the entire piece for you first, just so that you could 
uh, follow along with the music and see what you think. If somebody could just give me a thumbs up once once they can hear it, just so oh, I know. Okay. okay. So it should be playing. Add in their own part here. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Then they sing the refrain. And then they add in the next one. A couple things about this. Um, we added in bar lines. There were absolutely no bar lines. This was taken from the Antiochian website, um, and there's absolutely no bar lines, but we put them in there for rehearsal purposes, but also to give you the sense of where you want to end with each phrase and so on. We put in commas there for the breath marks, and then um, uh, the measure numbers, of course. It makes it so much easier to rehearse that way. But um, notice that you know it slowed down, it sped up on certain words that you were trying to emphasize, and um, the direction of flow kind of changes with, with each phrase. So with that, uh, if Kara can kind of give us her take on that first, those first few phrases. Sure. Yeah. So these first few phrases, we can kind of apply the same general shape to each phrase. When we start the phrase we're a little quieter, we swell in the center of the phrase, and then we get quieter again at the end of the phrase. And um, depending on the phrase, you know, there's a few in this first section, I leave you my peace, that's a shorter one. I give you my peace, that's a shorter one. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. So depending on kind of the length of the phrase, that shape is drawn out a little bit differently. Um, so I will, I'll sing a little bit of this first section um, and kind of show you what we're talking about. So right from the beginning here, here's the phrasing. Then we have our breath and we go on to the next one. We're kind of gonna swell on that, give you my peace. So here's the next one. And then we have that next breath. Now this next part, the triplet sort of drives the speed of this phrase forward a little bit. When we have more movement in the notes, the kind of speed drives a little bit more, um, it's like accelerated just a little bit. So we have, not as the world gives to I give to you. And we taper off again. And then here's that last phrase. I give you 
and we kind of come back down again on self. So that's really kind of the phrasing, the shape that we want to take in the first part. Um, the other thing we can talk a little bit about is the tone. You could probably hear it was kind of a very open back of our throat tone that we're aiming for. Um, so when we think about our resonance or like the central part of our sound, we're sort of aiming like almost like we're swallowing. It's really sitting in the back of our throats there. If the tone comes too far forward in our mouth like this, I leave you my peace. Do you hear the difference there? It's a little more, um, it's a little more difficult to blend when it's that sound. So we really want to aim for that open back of our throat tone of I leave you my peace, like that. So do we want to maybe play the first phrase and everyone can try singing? Um, and even though they're muted, you can try singing it like that on your own part. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. We good? Sorry. Mm -hmm. I leave you my peace. Let me make sure everybody's on mute just yeah, real quick. Everybody's and then we'll be good. One second. Because I don't know where my buttons all went. So I'll just mute everybody, I think, would be the best. And then Kara, Steve, if you need to unmute. Yep. Great. So if you could stop it right there, just I wanted to interject a couple things um, that uh, the tenor part uh, is, you know, all the parts are pretty easy, but I notice where it says the second line down world gives to you, I give to you where they end up on that high C. I don't know if it's the basis, but even on this recording, then you start again a little higher. And sometimes some of those guys don't get up there to that D up there and it gets a little flat. So you gotta make sure you take a big enough breath, support it. So you, when you come in there, it's not faltering and you can finish the phrase. And that's been a big deal for us when we don't have organ supporting us. Uh, it's all up to us to keep remembering to breathe enough to support so that your pitch stays up there, especially when the bases have to go up that high. Um, yeah, that's good. I, I had a, if I could interject this, um, just knowing, I mean, like Steve said earlier, we know that when we're acapella, our voices just go down, right? Um, it's just what they do. <laughs> so, um, it really, just having that in mind and kind of the mental reminder of, I've got to think up, I've got to think up and aim even a little bit higher sometimes just to keep yourself, um, just to keep yourself ahead of that falling flat that your voice naturally wants to do. Does it make any sense to play the tenor part, Kara? Yeah, we can do that. Do you want me to play the whole first part? It would be nice just, and, and if everybody wants to sing the tenor part, feel free. <laughs> um, sure, I'll play it on the keyboard. So just starting from that, from the beginning. So here we go. can sing then your part or that part if you want once again through that those phrases that would be nice Kiriakos, can you play it from the beginning for us
Yeah, and so another thing is I, I love how Kara said, you know, not as the world gives, you you get a little accelerando there, and then at the end, they slow it down. So mm -hmm. that makes it much more musical, um, goes with the words, and even though it's all pretty quiet, you still have those musical swells, and it makes it much more lovely than just straight, straight ahead. So, mm -hmm. um, and then what I found out is on the Alleluia, it starts a half step lower than on the note that you ended. So what happened is people want to start the Alleluia on the same note. So self, right? It's right there, la, la, la. And then they, they want to go Alleluia. It's not that. It's down a half step. Mm -hmm. Alleluia. So once you get used to it, there's no problem. But we found out that people forget to go down a half step to start the <laughs> Alleluia. Yeah, another thing that got me in the melody is that little third on measure 12. You go, Hallelujah. Do you see that little third? Uh, Kyriakos is going to highlight it there. Um, yeah, that can kind of get you too because the whole rest of this phrase is stepwise, meaning all the notes are just like one up or one down from the previous one, but there's that little skip in there. Um, that I had to go over a couple of times, even yesterday while I was going over this song, because I my voice just wanted to keep going up the scale there. Um, but I'll sing that little Alleluia. We have Alleluia, just in the uh, soprano part. And then if we could do that tenor part, because tenors have a hard time sometimes skipping up to those intervals. Yeah, so we have... want to sing that now or? yeah together from the alleluia yeah alleluia. so then uh, the next part kind of goes in three beats per measure and then two and then four so it's all over the place but Kara if you could talk about what you think of those phrases coming up Yes, so we see here that the actual sentences in the text are longer. So it's really ideal if we are able to stay in one breath, that whole first phrase that I give to you a new commandment. Um, obviously, if that's not possible, we like stagger breathing in choir so it, the sound stays the same. But we don't, um, when I talk about phrasing with my students, you know, if I were reciting this as scripture or even like in, in an artistic way, like a poem or something, I wouldn't say I give to you a new commandment, right? I would say I give to you a new commandment. So when we sing it, we want to keep that same principle there and, and keeping these phrases together, these kind of thoughts together. Um, and so I think you can kind of see the melody when it starts from I give to you, it's, it's going steadily up and commandment is when it kind of comes down. So you can see uh, the almost like the shape we were talking about, um, instead of the volume though, it's getting kind of higher and lower and we can sort of follow that with our volume, um, with our voice. So I'll sing that little, that first phrase. So we have, I give to you a new And we want a nice hard T on commandment. Otherwise it just sounds like commandment. You see that? <laughs> we want commandment. And we wanna put the T after the full half note. Um, that's one thing that we can sort of talk about with diction, right? Cause this is where most of the text is in the sum. Um, and in the next phrase we have another triplet. So you can kind of hear in the recording too, we'll listen to it again in a bit. Um, they'll kind of accelerate that just a little bit. But here's another longer phrase, love one another just as I love you. Um, so I'll sing the soprano part again. Love one another just as I love you. And then we kind of taper that off again. And this last part, the song is not a big finish song, right? It's just this nice little kind of peaceful ending um, to the song. So we have said the Lord, and we need a D again on the Lord. Um, we can always place those hard consonants after the full value of their of their them being held out. So we're gonna wait for that whole 
whole note at the end of Lord on measure 23 and then put the D almost like if there was a quarter note or something after it, that's where we put the D. Um, when we're singing a cappella, it's so important to have all our vowels and consonants in the same spots. Um, so, you know, wh who's ever directing the song should kind of like have that, you know, in mind. So everybody knows where to place these consonants. And I think in the, honestly, in the recording, there's a few spots where you can hear multiple consonants ending a phrase. So um, it's, you know, it's not perfect, but that's what we, that's what we aim to do. So do we want to listen to this third part? Yep. So did you hear that bass? Not quite, not quite get up to the set, the Lord didn't. Quite get up. And it's a, it's a hard thing to do. I, I find that, you know, you end and then you have to come back in even higher and keep that, that pitch. So that's a tough, um, uh, should we play the tenor part? Uh, maybe yeah. there's tenors out there. Yeah, from the from measure 14 or just from that measure yeah. 21? Yeah, I think the tenor part always seems to be the harder part to hear than uh, the other parts. Yeah, do you want me to sing it too? Uh, if you could. Yeah, great. sure. So we have. I give to you a new commandment. Love one another just as I love you. Said the Lord. There's a big jump down there at the end. <laughs> So if we could play that whole phrase, everybody could sing with us. I really like how this Antiochian choir accelerates and slows down. It just, to me, it's a very nice, very nice rendition. So um, yeah, it's a beautiful song. Um, so uh, I don't know if Kara has anything else to add, but if, you know, should we do the whole song? Everybody could sing it once through and then we could ask questions or whatever else we need. Sure. Yeah. The only thing, I guess if I could boil it down, because I know sometimes, um, it's, it's, it's easy to be overwhelmed with things that you could do in a choir piece. Um, but if I could kind of boil it down uh, to kind of three concepts, you can think of that tone we talked about, that nice open back of our throat tone, um, phrasing, right? Keeping our phrases in those, in those breaths uh, between the breath marks and where we're putting our vowels and consonants. So tone, phrasing, diction, right? That's kind of what the, the big, the umbrella term for where we're placing our vowels and consonants. But yeah, that's really all I've got. So we can, let's all sing it um, with our own parts together. Are we gonna just sing through the page one time through and stop? Or do you want me to, to let them do their middle insert parts that they had in that recording? Just- I think, I think we could just sing the- One time the, through. The page, yeah. Great, sounds good, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody can find their starting note.
And uh, just so that everybody knows, uh, we have a whole book of basically uh, a whole series of anthems that we sing. Uh, another one that I really like is Father, is it Father Pallad? Is that his name out in Arizona? Uh, Psalm 23. Uh, it's about four minutes long, so it's longer, but it's just beautiful. Uh, three parts, basically, three parts. So, uh, um, but anyway, Kara, I don't know if there's anything else you had to say. Oh, I think I, yeah, pretty much covered everything I had to say, but I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Well, I, I think, I hope everybody did. I think so. Uh, thank you very much, Steve and Kara. And um, welcome, Kara. Uh, I mean, thank you. Of course, welcome, Steve, but welcome, Kara. You're a new face. And uh, we're happy to have you and hope to see more of you. Hope to see more of both of you. Hope to see more of everybody next year <laughs> that uh, when we'll all be able to do some of these things in person. So with that, I'll um, turn it back over to Vicki and she will um, be um, asking some of the questions that you uh, put into the chat. Oh, Vicki, you're muted. Okay, hi. Hi. <laughs> we're, in, we're into the question and answer section of um, the sharing and walk, sharing, sharing in song sessions. Um, um, we have some questions that came up um, and uh, I'll be asking uh, Kara and Steve in just a minute. Um, but two little reminders. Um, if you haven't signed in yet, if you would put your name and your email and your church and city state in the chat box. And uh, the other is I'm going to put the, we're going to try it this way. I'm going to put the polling place um, questions up and I'm going to launch it so you will see it, but you don't have to answer it right away, but answer it just before you leave because um, you might want to consider the question and answer part. Um, but I'll launch it now so you should see it and then you can just minimize it and it should be there when you're ready to leave and just pull it up again, click on polls, pull it up and answer the questions. We'd appreciate your feedback on that. Okay, um, a couple of questions, um, uh, Steve and... Uh, um, uh, Kara, <laughs> um, uh, where can we get this music? Well, that's a good question because Nicholas got a lot of this, including this one. But this one, Kitiakis found it uh, free on the Antiochian website. Um, I'm not sure. I can post the link in the chat here, and then we can also email it maybe. OK. And uh, like I said, we had to put in bar lines. But since they give it for free, I guess we could send them this one that's that we have this version uh but you can email me if you want um it's simple it's my first initial last name s hadges at yahoo.com and i can you know uh share with you anything that we have but uh that one plus you know a bunch of others but but we can ask nicholas if nicholas is available right now nicholas found some other ones for us too um uh from different sites so i don't know if nicholas is still here with us I am. Hi, Steve. Hi, everybody. Uh, the, the Antiochian website does actually have a large collection of beautiful hymns, uh, para-liturgical music, if you will, that isn't necessarily meant to be sung during a liturgy, but uh, nice psalms and other hymns that could be sung as people are going up to receive on Dideron after the service. So you could check out the Antiochian website. Thanks, Kiriakos, for posting the link there in the chat. Their music library is uh, a wealth of Orthodox hymns that you can look through for different occasions. Some are sorted by feast day. Others are just any time good anthems to use after the liturgy is over. So that might be something nice for people to explore on their own. And Nicholas, you also had a book, did you not? Um, a friend of yours, we used a couple of his. Um, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Um, yes, uh, I don't think it's really published or, or for sale, although he yeah. might consider that in the future. Uh, my friend Michael Pilot, who is uh, the longtime choir director at our nearby Holy Trinity Church, it's an OCA parish in Parma, Ohio. Michael uh, recently turned uh, 
the big 80. So for his 80th birthday celebration, he's compiled a list of arrangements, uh, a whole book full of different hymns that he has arranged over the years. Um, a lot of them from the Russian tradition, although he has different hymns from various backgrounds, including the Byzantine. So that's a, another source that I've had as well. But uh, there's a lot of good resources, especially online, that you can go and look. Some of the other archdioceses um, have a good selection. Well, and then is it Father Pallad? I really like his Psalm 23. I think everybody should try to find a way to sing that one. Maybe that will be presented some other day, but that is uh, just a beautiful piece of Lovely. music. Um, so I don't know. He has a website that you can go directly to. Is that right? He, I, I believe so, Steve. He's from Peoria. His church is in Peoria, Arizona. So you could, you know, is contact him. Yeah, yeah. If you, yeah. but I the other night I just wrote in, you know, Michael Pallad. Um, if you do, um, I think I did Michael Pallad Pan Orthodox Choral. That's where I found it. But um, you you can easily get to it or contact him at his church. Yeah, his website here is uh, this is Father Michael Pallad. It's occfellowship.org. It's the Orthodox Christian Choral Fellowship, and in addition to that Psalm. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd that Steve had mentioned. Father has written a few different arrangements. I believe he has one, uh, uh, O Virgin Pure, that's uh, the hymn of St. Nectarios, Blessed Feast Day, by the way, for St. Nectarios. And uh, Christ is Born is another new arrangement that was just debuted on a big recording last year at, at his parish or out at Assumption in, in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. So if you go onto that website, occfellowship.org, there's some beautiful hymns by Father Michael that you can explore as well. He's also written an entire liturgy. Um, for a while, we knew, I think one of the first things he wrote by himself um, was the doxology. And uh, I just noticed that he has an entire liturgy now too. And we actually have a couple of Nicholas Bodel arrangements also in our repertoire. So Nicholas has written many things you could use as well, so. The recessionals, the recessionals are a good place for the choir to, you know, spread their wings and, you know, you, you, you want to always have them learning some new music so they're not doing the same old, same old thing. And um, that time period during recessionals is a good place to, to put some of, some of these like what Steve showed, showed us. Steve, we, and Kara, we had a couple of, of questions about, you know, interest in your comments about a cappella singing and how how did you go about you know yes you had a shock when father said okay that's how you're going to sing now no more organ but how did you go about making that transition with your choir did you know because there's attitudes and <laughs> being scared of it and all of that so do you have any tips for us as to what what can be done to help choirs through that transition well, sure, I'll tell you what, basically you said it, it was shock and awe. The people are like, what, we can't do this, you know? So it took lots of reassuring because, you know, the good thing is we actually did it because we just didn't have an organist. So we just had to do it and it went okay. We know that there were some spots, but everybody was afraid, including myself, because, you know, I was only there a year and now I have to do a cappella. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait. But it was, it was really fine. It was just seeking out ways of doing things better. Uh, you know, I know that I had talked to Kara sometimes. I've talked to other people and we had some clinics. Uh, so you have to, first of all, get the proper tone, uh, get the support and keep that pitch from coming down. So that's what we started with. And uh, we started with simple things and we sing the Kevin Lawrence which is, you know, pretty simple. It's not like Desby or anything else. Our church does mostly Kevin Lawrence, four-part harmony. Uh, and then on hymns of the day, it's basically Byzantine chant for those few things. But it goes back to Kevin Lawrence and, and we, we, we do that. So um, it's reassuring people that it can be done uh, because you have good singers. Uh, none of us are perfect, but just constant reassurance. We always um, practice with the piano. Uh, so Nicholas comes over to our church on Wednesday nights and he's our accompanist. And then he goes back to his church on uh, Sundays. But we practice with the piano and we try to then sing without it. And then we check the piano to see where we ended up. It was constant back and forth and building that confidence 
and reassuring people it can be done. Let's face it, we hear the priests do it all the time. Now, let's face it, the priests also go flat all the time. So, you know, I, I have an iPad that I have an organ app. And when, I, when they start to go way down and our choir gets out of sorts, I just hit the notes on my iPad and I have a Bluetooth speaker in the back and I try to make it as quiet as I can so the choir hears it, but the congregation doesn't really hear it that well. Uh, and that keeps us on. I'd rather use that than a pitch pipe because I can't stand pitch pipes to me because it sounds like a harmonica and I don't <laughs> want that sound in a church. So I use the iPad with the organ app and that brings us back up. It brings the priests back up until they decide to go back down again. So, you know, confidence, just have to build the confidence, get people to believe that they can do it because they can, you know, everybody can do this. They're good singers. Yeah. Um, and it's just, and sometimes, you know, it, somebody that's strong, no matter what section, it could be the basses, it could be alto, it could be soprano. If somebody goes strong and gets off, it's like, meow, there goes everybody. So then you're just like, oh, okay, listen. And then here's the pitch. And then you give the pitches again. And then we, we start the next response. Um, so it's just, you know, what you have to go through. And, and everybody is kind to us in our congregation. Uh, and, and then once we got used to it, they complimented us a lot. And um, so, you know, it's just a process and- Yeah. I know work. I've, I've um, seen that in two choirs that I've been part of, Indianapolis and Buffalo, who made that transition too. And one of the things I noticed is that both directors started with music that we knew cold. We right. didn't, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and that seemed to help because the sound was already in our head and it was a little bit easier. Um, you started to answer we, a couple of other questions we had about how do you help people stay on pitch? You started to answer that. And, uh, you know, any other tips that- um, Well, Kira could tell yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, so um, acapella singing, um, there's a lot to say. Let me think of how to boil it down. Um, it's really all about listening to the other people in the choir, right? Uh, blending, blending, blending. So even if the choir is starting to go flat, you kind of all want to go flat together <laughs> because if you can stay, you know, you, if you can have um, good relative pitch, then that helps a lot. Um, another big thing with acapella singing is straightening the tone out a little. And I mean, I mean, like uh, less vibrato in the tone. So, um, like, you know, in that first phrase, I leave you my peace. If you're singing soprano, you can't really go, I leave you my peace, right? Because that's not going to match the other people in your section. So bringing that tone back and, and really trying to blend with the other voices right next to you is really important in acapella singing. And it helps not to eliminate the vibrato completely, but to try and straighten it out as much as you can so that you don't have vibrato sticking out um, in other places. But yeah, just listening and listening and listening and almost trying to hear the people next to you more than you can hear yourself helps a lot with acapella singing. And then yeah. another one related is how do you help someone that just can't seem to get it? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's, you know, that's a funny question because I do, I teach a lot of beginner vocal students um, and it seems like you know, it's probably a blend of both, but some people just think, well, it's just natural. And if you just don't have it, you just don't have it. But I don't think that's true. I think it is, I think, you know, finding that pitch and finding, and even just matching pitch, um, it's a learned skill. And if you spend enough time working on it, it will improve, right? So just, just the simple idea of hearing a pitch, internalizing that pitch and reproducing that pitch that's a process that we all go through. And sometimes it does come more naturally to people, but it really is a learned skill. Um, if you have trouble just matching pitch, I would literally just suggest sitting at a keyboard, playing a note, giving yourself time to like, listen, try and hum it, try and sing it, you know, just start really small um, and then go from there. I'm sure if you looked up like vocal warmups on YouTube or something like that, you could, you know, practice getting yourself up and down scales. And if you know the notes of the scale, even just learning like the do, re, mi that goes along with it, um, 
having those syllables associated with those notes can really help with the relative pitch. And when I say relative pitch, I mean knowing the distance between the pitches more than the pitches themselves, because that's more important when you're singing a cappella. Yeah. Well, and that's one thing that we start to do more is do warm ups with the do mi so mi do and mm -hmm. certain things in our warm ups now that we try to do not too long, but at least we start with that. And then, Kara, you weren't there when we did this, but tell me if this makes sense. Uh, say there's six sopranos and they're not all matching. So maybe we'll take three and three and face each other. And now we're going to sing. Uh, maybe there's another way to do this, but they have to like sing towards each other and listen to each other and then they actually have to match. So I don't know, Carol, how could, what is that like? Yeah, I think that's, I don't think that's a bad idea. I think it really is all about um, trying, like listening to yourself less and listening to the others more and just matching them. So if everyone is trying to match what the other person sounds like, when you get to those notes that are all in unison, like and I leave you, like and I leave you my peace. When we finish that phrase with "I give you myself," that's everybody's on an F there. Um, so it's one of those things where if you're trying to match that person next to you and they're trying to do the same thing, and everyone is trying to match, 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 um, then yeah, you're you're gonna kind of morph into the the oneness of the sound. But yeah, I don't think that's a bad exercise if you even facing each other in a choir setting that can help. Just developing our listening skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I know you, you mentioned this is what you use as a recessional. Um, there was a question of um, in a traditional Greek service, where, where would we fit it in? It seems like the text just calls for a recessional, but are there any other um, times where you think it might be appropriate? I I don't know about this particular song. Uh, I We thought of the Psalm 23 that Father Pallad did. Uh, we thought, well, could that be fit uh, in uh, as people go up for communion? Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, I don't know if it, it all probably depends what the your priest wants. Yeah. So I don't know, to tell you the truth, if those can. We typically always sing them at the end. Uh, and we have that whole group of songs. Uh, yeah. uh, I remember years ago, our church used to use all kinds of even Protestant hymns at the end. Now, some of the ones that we have might even sound sort of Protestant um, uh, harmonized, but they're done by Orthodox people. So that's what we try to do is keep it Orthodox in philosophy so that whoever harmonizes it, even if it's more along the you know, Protestant tradition of harmony, um, it's still got that orthodox uh, philosophy, um, but um, yeah, I don't know if, if you can use a lot of them during the service, but maybe during communion if your priest uh, yeah. approves. Yeah, it's checking to make sure there's a scripture, you know, like you told us in the beginning, this comes from John, um, helps you decide it's orthodox or not. <laughs> yeah. everything that you guys have in your anthem collection pretty much comes from scripture and you can find out where it goes and i would say a fair amount of it actually can be used as a communion hymn and i've seen the most of them done as communion hymns in other churches well, and i don't um, mean the communion hymn i mean when they go up or during communion yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. what i'm saying is like yeah. like a lot of the week a lot of um weekdays you have a special hymn for you know communion time okay. but then let's say it's a sunday and you have 20 minutes of people getting communion at a large church and you have this filler time, most priests give the blessing to do something that fits, whether it's like Lent time and you're trying to find a hymn that has a Lenten theme to it, for example. A lot of priests will give you the blessing. Um, I think a choir director who understands a little bit of the theology behind the hymn and can explain that to the priest will make a convincing argument. Argument. Most priests are gonna say, yeah, it sounds fine, sing it well, you know, you give my blessing. Um, not many priests are gonna say no, unless maybe it's the chanters, you know, one of their times to chant, for example. Right. Um. Okay. Well, I just um, looked at the clock. We're getting close to eight o'clock. Um, and I, I don't, I think I got all the questions or the gist of most of them. Um, but we want to thank you, Kara and Steve, for a really instructional evening. And uh, I'd invite everybody to save next week. Um, uh, is a little bit different because of time scheduling. We're going to have it Tuesday night at seven o'clock. 
and we're going to take a look at um, Anita, written by Nicholas Rubanis. But the nice thing is, is that through the National Forum, um, that's been set to English, not by him, of course, but um, um, by a committee of, of National Forum people. Um, and Anne Marie Miller, Anna Maria Miller from Nashville, Tennessee, the choir director will be the guest instructor. So we invite you to join us again next Tuesday. Remember just one time it's on a Tuesday, seven o'clock and uh, you're welcome to stay on um, and just chit chat or talk some more with Steve and Kara. Um, um, but um, Again, we'll, we'll sign off now um, with asking you, or we won't sign off, we'll ask you, make sure you fill out the poll. I know a lot of people have already. The poll just um, closed, Vicki. Oh, it is closed? Know. So it I don't must know why. be signed. Okay, so, um, so we can carry on. Thank you all for coming. And- uh, I got uh, the poll this time, Vicki. Vicki, the poll came up this time. <laughs> oh, good, Alex, good. I don't know what you did. Whatever you did, do it again next week. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.